everyone, and welcome to our chapel service of H.J. International Graduate School for Public for Peace and Public Leadership. Thank you so much for joining us for this special event held at a different time, 11 a.m. on this Wednesday morning. And as uh, we all know, in, at least in the U.S., uh, Thanksgiving is approaching, and in our hearts, it's always a time to count our blessings, to offer thanks to God and to our brothers and sisters, to our family for the blessings that we have in our life. So today we've gathered together here on a very special occasion, I think an important occasion, where we want to offer as HGI Thanksgiving reflections on the era of the Berrytown Providence. So as you know, uh, we have taken measures for the sale of the Berrytown property. We're in a position now to hand that over very soon in the next few days. But before that happens, we wanted to gather together here and to offer reflections on what this has meant to us, our time spent here, and to really uh, give gratitude and offer glory to our heavenly parent and our true parents. So to begin our program, I'd like to invite up Associate Dean of Student Life, uh, Mika Desitel, to offer our opening prayer. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's take a moment uh, and bow our heads in prayer. Our dearest, most beloved heavenly parent, true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind, we greet you in this beautiful season of gratitude. Uh, here in America, we're preparing for uh, the tradition of Thanksgiving, and uh, it's a wonderful chance uh, as the year of 2023 is drawing to a close to think about uh, how much we are loved by you and by those around us and how much we love and appreciate our family, our friends, our community, and how much we also strive to become uh, better sons and daughters of yours. We think about those who are struggling at this time, and we know that the purpose for our uh, involvement, our studies, our energy and investment in HJI, formerly UTS, uh, was for the sake of really being able to further your will in, a, in bringing about a world peace. Heavenly Parent, uh, this is a beautiful gathering that we have to uh, reflect on the era of the Berrytown Providence. We know that from the words of our founders, Father and Mother Moon, that actually an institution is not just encompassed in a building, but actually in the people and the vision and the mission for which they strive for. As people of faith and academia, we have been committed and continue to be committed to being effective, in our ministry, our public leadership, and interreligious peace building, and at the core of it, to strengthen and deepen our relationship with you, God. I pray that as we reflect on the time that was spent, the many years since the founding of the school uh, in 1974, that uh, we can take this time to really cherish the memories that were created and the accomplishments that were gained and also uh, the challenges and the things that really uh, helped us to move forward and become uh, bigger and better people so that we could uh, really go out into our respective fields and make a difference. Heavenly Parent, I pray that you can be with us in this gathering and really enjoy with us as we offer Thanksgiving to you and uh, in this special time uh, in this uh, building at Berrytown, we're all connected, even though we might be uh, physically in different places. We pray uh, and offer these things uh, in all of our names. And in my name, Abraham and Mika Destel, as a blessed central family. Amen and adieu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean Destel. To begin our program, I'd like now to invite up Dr. Frank Labrateria. Vice President of HJI for a reading of the words of our founders. Greetings, brothers and sisters. The first reading is from True Father from the UTS inaugural convocation speech 
given on September 20th, 1975. Distinguished and capable professors of high caliber will be with us teaching the 50 handpicked students who are well prepared with burning enthusiasm. It is by these people that the seminary will be initiated. In other words, I am not the founder of the Unification Theological Seminary after all, but rather the founders are these students who are here before us. The seminary is not a place or a building. It is these people who are equipped with the spirit and ideal given by God through unification theology. We must change our direction from the established theologies which are deprived of life and spirit and turn to a new theology with a dynamic vitality and lifestyle in which God would directly participate. By our learning it thoroughly and having the logos incarnated in ourselves, we will surely be able to build great personalities, making it possible to best use the acquired ideal and knowledge in accordance with God's will. Therefore, until future days when you will begin your life in society, you must invest all your energy and time in studying and training yourselves to be capable master builders of the ideal world in conformity with God's will. Brilliant deeds and results accumulated with our blood, sweat, and tears will provide excellent answers to the numerous skeptics who question us now. More than in any other educational institute, to teach and study in one where men and women are produced, who will contribute in establishing the ideal world under God, is surely what would please God and make men happy. This is a sacred task, well worthy of a hard struggle. Therefore, I sincerely hope that the professors and students of the Unification Theological Seminary would, as the name implies, be united into harmonious oneness so that the whole institute will have sound growth as a living organism, thus securely establishing a solid foundation and a shining tradition in the principle to be inherited by future generations of students. Unification theology is God's ideology, God's philosophy, and God's doctrine. And the Unification Theological Seminary will be the very arena where you will practice the knowledge and ideal you acquire here. Consequently, you are going to build a miniature kingdom of God right here in our seminary, according to God's providential blueprint. We will establish a new world of unified culture with the Orient and Occident integrated, thus transcending national boundaries, racial discrimination, and the generation gap, and en enabling the realization of the earthly kingdom of God, where one world and one human family will at last be the reality. In this sense, I strongly believe that the inaugural convocation of the Unification Theological Seminary today is the laying of the cornerstone of the earthly kingdom of God. The next reading is from True Mother from her autobiography, The Mother of Peace, 2020, Chapter 7. We must improve the results of education. Fully mature individuals do not emerge on their own, nor are they produced by obsessing over grades. We must guide young people to acquire knowledge and wisdom on the foundation of physical fitness and good character. We need to understand that God is the original substance of true love and truth and the original form of character, and we need to live by following his will. To this end, I have overseen the development and determination of character education textbooks that will help cultivate morally sound teenagers and young adults throughout the world. To love people is to practice living for the sake of others and foster a spirit of harmony and public service. To love your nation means to cultivate your God-given talents, love your homeland, and build God's kingdom. We are all responsible to raise the next generation of truly good and talented men and women. Today, our movement has schools around the world, from kindergartens to graduate schools. One is the Unification Theological Seminary, established in 1975 with an interreligious faculty, Catholic, Protestant, Greek Orthodox, Jewish, and Confucian, as well as Unificationists. Under the leadership of Dr. David S.C. Kim, Dr. Young Un Kim, its Barrytown campus served as the base for the new Ecum Ecumenical Research Association and gave rise to the Interdenominational Conferences for Clergy, the Youth Seminar on World Religions, 
and the assembly of the world religions. Today, UTS is going strong at its mid-Manhattan campus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Larbateria. We would now to like to uh, present to you for your viewing and reflection, a selection of photographs from the Barrytown Providence era in which reflect both the past and the present of HJI.
thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful presentation. Of course, not a definitive history, but a, a selection of photographs that allow us to reflect upon the many decades of successful providence here at the Berrytown campus. I want to thank our wonderful sister Adelica for putting this beautiful video together. Now, it's uh, my honor to present to you words from our Continental Director, Reverend Amy Dunkley, the leader of Family Federation in the US. As you know, Reverend Dunkley's schedule is extremely busy, so he couldn't be with us uh, today live. However, he has sent a, a short recording offering his greetings to everyone present. Hey guys, you may remember in the letter I wrote about Barrytown, that there's a tree outside the back of the building where I was sitting the day that I found my wife was pregnant with my first child, Timothy Dunkley. So actually that's the most memorable experience for me. But I know that many of our elders had incredible experiences on this campus with true father, true mother, and many, many incredible brothers and sisters. So this is uh, indelible. It will always be a part of our history and in our hearts. Who knows, maybe one day we'll buy everything back. But anyway, everything ultimately belongs to Heavenly Parent. And so we are on a quest to really bring the whole nation for true parents and for the sake of the world. So anyway, today is Wednesday chapel service and I wanted to greet you and mention that I'm currently on a secret mission myself, a Thanksgiving mission myself, but uh, because I'm on the move, I'm sending you a recorded video, but uh, I'm only sending this moments before you guys start. So I'm with you in heart and spirit. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, uh, Dr. Walsh, for inviting me to give a greeting to you all. Thank you to all of our uh, advisors, our faculty, our elders, our students, and our supporters. God bless HJI. This is the place to get your degree because I'm telling you, 100 years from now, 50 years, even 10 years from now, everybody's going to wish they had one from this school. So let us really celebrate Thanksgiving and figure out all the things we can be grateful for here in this chapel, and most importantly, together with one another and true parents. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take some time off with your family and make happy memories. They will remain forever. God bless you. Bye. Thank you very much, Reverend Dunkley. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us. We're grateful that we're in your thoughts as you are in ours and in our prayers. So now it's my honor to introduce to you our president of HCI, Dr. Thomas Walsh, who will offer his remarks on this chapel service. Thank you, Dean Boyd. Uh, anyway, what a beautiful occasion and a beautiful opening prayer, Dean Desotel, very moving and appropriate. And uh, as Dean Boyd said, uh, beautiful selection of photos and memories. I'm sure that tug on our our heartstrings. And the words that Dr. Frank Lagrateri read very apt and very profound and and moving, kind of reminding us of true parents' investment in this. Of course, this great institution of UTS now HJI. Uh, but even how this property served the providence in such wonderful and profound ways. As Dean Boyd said, we are on the threshold of the transfer of the property in just a couple of days. And we wanted to convene our chapel service here because the uh, uh, we're in the process of moving uh, it's not really suitable to invite everyone here at this time. Even the heating is not fully operating. So, uh, but we can at least be together on this wonderful uh, webinar. I uh, know that we all have great memories of Berrytown, and uh, certainly it's been transformative in my my own life. Uh, 
I joined the church in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, got word in, uh, sometime in 1977 early that uh, I was a candidate for the seminary. Uh, I had submitted a, an application and uh, many of us gathered in lecture hall one and uh, with father. Father came with uh, David Kim and there was a, a group of us and he, you know, selected the class that would be the third graduating class. So it was a, a thrilling moment, actually, for me. Uh, I was thrilled to be able to, to study and amazed that this uh, religious movement that I joined in Los Angeles had the kind of vision to develop a, a theological seminary. So it, it changed my life uh, in the, the most profound way. And, you know, when I think of some of the memories, uh, the most notable, like Reverend Dunkley said in his beautiful message, you know, he has this memory of learning about uh, his wife's pregnancy. Well, I had the memory of uh, meeting my wife before we were matched because she came in with the, the, the class following mine. So we overlapped. Uh, uh, as classmates, and, and then uh, not long before I graduated in May of 1979, we were matched by father. So we then spent another couple of months, you know, being on the same on the same campus. Uh, that's many of you know Lynn, and uh, that uh, like Reverend Dunkley, that was. Uh, another and certainly the greatest blessing of, of my life uh, to be joined together with Lynn. Um, so it's so many memories father visited. We fished with father. We walked on the fields on different occasions. My mother came to visit and I was able to, you know, meet her in the hallway out in front of lecture hall one and uh, she could greet father and later father asked me about that and I explained that uh, she had come to visit me he asked what about my father and I said my father had had just uh, passed uh, not long before that and uh, a couple of years and I always remember we were sitting out on the lawn and and he he commiserated with that in a way that completely took me by surprise because he he had a deep empathy that was much deeper than my own, that I, I can never forget that that moment. So these are etched in my my memory uh, deeply. Uh, and so many people devoted so much of their lives to this great uh, providence. True Mother, in her words, mentions the interfaith work of our movement that started out, you know, very very small and uh, kind of working with our librarian, David Kim was working with John Maniatis and some of us were editing books and Dr. Kim had the idea of the Global Congress. And we had the theologians conferences and people like Dale Bryant and Richard Cabado, Herb Richardson would come and they, we were just in love with them because they stimulated us and we could share they were open to our theology, and uh, this this evolved. The God Conference was kind of born here. The first youth seminar on the world's religions convened here at the time that we, uh, many of us, were preparing for the 1982 blessing that uh, July uh, before they began their world uh, world voyage. Uh, David Kim, the morning briefs, the uh, morning walks after Sunday, pledge service. Uh, what a great uh, memory. And Dr. Hong and uh, Mrs. Stewart and uh, so many, the, the various board of trustees members over the years, uh, Farley Jones, and, uh, uh, Jose Durst, Neil Salonen, and uh, our faculty, staff, uh, 
just a great history. So I think our point here is to just underscore uh, that this is a history that's etched in the heart and soul of heaven. And it's it's uh, forever there. It's an eternal uh, accomplishment and victory of our true parents. And we're so indebted to our true parents for what giving us this property to use so purposefully and so powerfully uh, for our movement and God's God's providence, and we all benefited uh, so much from it. So that's uh, that's really my message, and I think our on this Thanksgiving uh, occasion, our our message. We are grateful to Heavenly Parent, grateful to our true parents, and grateful to all those, all our students and the the alumni all over the world. Thank you, all that served on the staff, all that came here for GPA and or interfaith programs. God bless you and thank you. HDI is surely moving forward. Of course, our campus is at 43rd Street now, and we feel a tremendous uh, a responsibility to build on this unshakable, unbreakable, and victorious foundation and take it further and beyond. Uh, in ways that truly bring honor to heaven's efforts and their investment and to true parents' effort and investment. Thank you for joining us today. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much, Dr. Walsh. <clears throat> very heartfelt remarks. And I think everyone feels touched and many things in our memories and our hearts are kind of uh, evoked based upon your words. Now it's my pleasure to invite up uh, Dr. Thomas Ward, HCI Provost, who will offer his comments and remarks on this occasion. Dr. Ward. Thank you very much, Dean Boyd. And thank you, Dr. Walsh, as uh, Dean Boyd said, for your heartfelt expression, I think that all of us share in our appreciation of, uh, of this place, Barrytown. Barrytown was built by the Christian brothers. As many of you are aware, it was a residential campus where young seminarians were prepared for their future lives as ministries. And for the first few decades of Unification Theological Seminary, this was also a residential seminary, a place where those of us who were students, we were together 24-7, living together, working together, sharing together, growing together. It was a remarkable and special, special experience for all of us who were able, able to live that. And uh, so many major leaders went through that residential experience. We can't even begin to name all of them, but I thought of a few, um, Dr. Michael Jenkins, uh, Dr. Walsh, obviously, Dr. Balcom, Dr. Otsuka, who is the uh, a continental leader in Europe, uh, Dr. Ki-hun Kim, Dr. dong Woo Kim, who's responsible now for South America, Peter Kim, Yuna Nim, and so many others who were a part of UTS as this residential uh, experience, which was so precious for all of us. I studied at UTS from 1979 to 1981, uh, when, uh, along with Bill Sedek, who joins us today, we were asked to join CAUSA. I taught at UTS from 1993 until 2000 as an adjunct, first at the request of Dr. David Kim, and then Father asked me to teach the CAUSA worldview here, and I did that from 1996 until 2000. And then uh, my wife and I, we moved here to the uh, Dutchess County again, in uh, 2019 and have been uh, so blessed to be part of this uh, community uh, for the past uh, <clears throat> four years. <clears throat> Being a residential place of education, uh, UTS, now HJI, was, was a womb for all of us who were a part of, of that experience. And uh, the womb is where, as Father has told us so often, basically um, 
the child is prepared for life here on this earth. And likewise, I think all of us, we were prepared here for a public life. We received the remarkable types of training in many different specific areas, um, physical training. Um, I know that in, in, in our era, back in, in that part of the uh, late 70s and 1980s, we did Tongil Mudo every single day, 6 a.m., getting up and, and doing martial arts. It was a remarkable training. Walking along Father's Trail, uh, fishing, fishing in the pond. Um, you know, all my life I've, I've tried to exercise and stay in shape, but I really know that that was all prepared for me because of that time that I could spend as a residential student at, uh, at Barrytown. I really appreciated that. Also, intellectual training, words I didn't even know, disciplines I didn't know anything about that I could be introduced to while at, uh, there at Barrytown, things like um, patristics. New Testament, Hebrew Bible, New Testament Greek, Korean, uh, East Asian philosophy, just wonderful disciplines and opportunities that, that were, were provided to allow us to be able to expand our, our minds and hearts. And I would also say an appreciation training through, uh, through professors such as uh, Dr. Boswooper and Warren Lewis and Dr. Machek and uh, um, Dr. Uh, Younglin Kim, particularly, Dr. Kebado, Dr. Pyong, um, really remarkable moments to discover the, uh, the inherent values in each of the faiths and to understand that there were so many things that I could learn from those faiths and become humble to other faiths. Because I think that uh, when I came to uh, to uh, Barrytown, I had a chip on my shoulder that everything was just about unificationism. And I really saw that God had worked in so many ways and through so many religious disciplines. And I really appreciated the opportunity to have that chance to interface and to speak with them, to sit sit at the sit at the table with them. And it, it was a very, very special opportunity to be able to to do those types of things. Um, likewise, it was possible during that period of time to um, to receive remarkable leadership training, as Dr. Walsh said, every morning, morning, uh, morning service with Dr. David Kim, you know, and uh, figures such as uh, Dr. Ong, who's just such an amazing mentor and helped me many times to get through really difficult moments in my life, not knowing where to go. And he just gave excellent advice. And also, Dr. Uh, Dean Therese Stewart, who is such a, a wonderful maternal and loving figure in, in, in our lives there at the seminary at that time. And um, yeah, I just really felt very, very blessed to, to be with all of them, but particularly to be with True Father as often as we could. You know, you see one True Father when you go to Belvedere, but the True Father who came to Barrytown was different. All the defenses were down. He was there to speak to us as a colleague, in many ways, almost as a peer and uh, very, very personal, very, very vulnerable, very, very caring about about each of us and and uh, doing so many remarkable things, whether fishing or playing pool or whatever it was, uh, t teaching people how to play soccer, whatever it was. I mean, he was so active, so personal, so real, it was so, so effective and, and made just a great impact upon us as people that we're going to be called to fulfill leadership roles in the future. And I also want to say that I received at uh, UTS Barrytown wonderful affective training with my with my colleagues, with, with my brothers and sisters, you know, that I had the chance to study with. Really, that was a time when we were there as, again, 24-7, it was a chance for us to be able to really make friends for life. People that we, we would cross, we would go across our careers with. I, as I said, I see Bill Selig here, and I think of my dear brother, Roger Johnstone, that I worked with for so many years, and how those, those friendships, those relationships, they were, they were forged in those early times. And anyway, for all those reasons, I'm so appreciative for the things that could happen in this place because it was a remarkable place 
to prepare all of us a kind of a womb to be, uh, be able to go out into public life. But I'm also grateful that we are starting a new chapter now under the leadership of Dr. Walsh and under the inspiration of our true mother through HJI. It's a time we don't have the ability anymore to have that 24 seven right now. This is a different chapter, but we do have an opportunity to do the kinds of things that we're doing today through this type of online exchange. And we are having so many chances to really reach out and have these very exciting events on a, you know, on a, on a virtual basis, just like the recent event with uh, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Kone uh, on the Middle East. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful chance for, to, to communicate across across the you know the uh the world because of the technology and the opportunities that we have available so it's a launching pad it's a time for a new start and it's a time to appreciate all the things that we could experience at Barrytown and also look forward to and already benefit from the many new opportunities that are opening us up opening up us to uh, opening up to us today so I just want to say thank you so much to Barrytown. Thank you so much for all the precious memories. And thank you so much for allowing a whole group of uh, cohort of, of unificationists during a certain period of time to go through that very special training that we could share together. And thank you also because it's on that foundation that we are able to move forward and go onward now in this new HJI era. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ward, for your moving testimony. Again, so many memories, so many meaningful experiences that all of us have had in some way or another here during uh, Barrytown during this providence under our true parents. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you Dr. Michael Mickler, distinguished professor of historical studies, who will offer his, perfection, his uh, reflection. Thank you, Dean Boyd, and greetings to all. Um, I'm gonna take a slightly different uh, perspective, uh, maybe not surprisingly, it'll be more of a historical perspective, but I want to, um, to say that the providence for Barrytown began far earlier than when the unification movement purchased the property. And I think you'll, in the five to seven minutes that I have, I think you'll be amazed uh, at the towering figures in US history that are associated with this property. And the way this property has not only been, a, has been kind of a springboard as Dr. Ward just said, but a transforming influence in American life and now in the international life. So. Quickly, uh, I just want to mention that the original owners of the property were the Livingston family. And the outstanding representative of the Livingston family was Robert Livingston, and, who happens to be one of America's founding fathers. I doubt that very many people are aware that he was a member of the Committee of Five that drafted the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, yeah. along with Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Roger Sherman. Um, as chancellor of New York, which means the highest judiciary officer, he also administered the oath of office to America's first president, George Washington, in 1789 in New York City. And Washington uh, took his oath of office with his hand on the Livingston family Bible. As I said, the Livingstons were the owners of this property. After that, he became minister to France uh, from 1801 to 1804, and along with Benjamin Franklin, negotiated the Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the landmass of the United States um, and paved the way for Western expansion in this country. I think there were, I looked online, there were 530 million square acres added to the country, 828,000 square miles. And finally, while in France, um, he met an inventor by the name of Robert Fulton, who you may know invented the commercial steamship, the steamboat. And he supported Fulton financially 
uh, in developing the steamboat, which then opened up commerce in the country up and down the Hudson River before the railroads came in. And Fulton actually named his steamboat Claremont, which is the name of Robert Livingston's home, which is just north of us, the next uh, mansion up the river. So Robert Livingston in the 18th century was a towering figure and they were the owners of this property. In the 19th century, um, in 1868, young Theodore Roosevelt, nine-year-old Theodore Roosevelt came to this property at Berrytown uh, Messina House across from the main building and spent the summer here in 1868. And when he was here, um, he began his lifelong diary and also his bug collection. He collected insects, uh, animal, mammals, snakes, and birds while he was here at Berrytown. And that collection later found a home at the Natural History Museum in New York City, which his father founded. And when Roosevelt became president, he preserved uh, America's national forest and established America's national park system. And uh, that love of nature was nurtured when he came to Berrytown. Mm -hmm. So you can see how this property has had a providential impact on this country. Mm -hmm. We go to the 20th century, and in 1928, a well-known American, reputed to be the wealthiest American ever of all time, more than our Bill Gates and Amazon founders today, John D. Rockefeller, had a home in Westchester uh, that was on a hill above Sleepy Hollow, and he was um, kind of systematically buying out the properties on that hill so he could have an un, unimpended view of the Hudson River. And one of the properties there was the Christian Brother property. They had established a educational institution and they were blocking Rockefeller's view. <laughs> so after negotiation, he was able to purchase that uh, Christian Brother property uh, for $850,000 he gave them a, another million dollars and promised them he'd build them a school upstate. And that's what he proceeded to do. This school, this main building was built by John D. Rockefeller between 1929 and 1931, the main building here at Berrytown. Rockefeller, this marked a transition in this property significance, moving in the direction of religious education and missionary activity. And uh, Rockefeller was a great philanthropist. He built uh, um, what's the church uh, right across from the Union? Riverside, Riverside Church, established the University of Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And so the Christian brothers operated this uh, property for 40 years, and then the unification movement purchased it in 1974. And originally the property was the uh, Berrytown International Training Center before the seminary started. And I think uh, most of you may know that this is where the missionaries, the first wave of overseas missionary prepared to go out to the world. And so that was world mission and also domestic mission. There was a Berrytown training program here for missionaries that went out across America. And finally, UTS was founded on September 20th, 1974. And in the course of UTS being here, uh, about 1600 graduates have gone out to the world. So, um, as I see it, the major theme uh, of this property is um, going out to impact the world, to transform the world. And um, I, in, the 20, in, the, in the 21st century, I don't think it was an accident that UTS established its extension site in Manhattan at 43rd Street in the year 2000, just as the 21st century was beginning. And uh, and so now our institution is 
the institution itself is moving out and with the vision of transforming the world. Yes. A whole new institution with a new name, an emerging identity, and a great mission. Uh, but I will say that uh, our presence here will be remembered. One of the um, important elements of our sale is the preservation of Father's Trail. So when Father purchased this property, he said that he, he, he felt it was perfect uh, for religious education in particular because of the blend of forest, uh, uh, mountains, forest, and river. And with the preservation of Father's Trail, which is guaranteed now for any alumni who wants to come back or the public in general, they'll be able to walk Father's Trail in perpetuity and have those same feelings and exposure. And so that legacy and presence will always be here at Barrytown. But we are moving out to transform the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mickler, for that historical overview, very inspiring. We feel close, the property close in our heart for many reasons that are sentimental, rather with a life of faith, but thank you for reminding us of the great heritage that we are a part of, and actually our vision for the future. Thank you. Uh, next, we'd like to invite up our uh, registrar, our associate dean, Ute Delaney, to offer her comments. Ute? Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. I have been thinking about the theme and to be thankful and grateful. And uh, being thankful and grateful is a very personal, profoundly personal experience. You can have the same gift from someone and you are thankful and somebody else gets the same gift and uh, poo-poos the whole thing. It's, <laughs> it's nothing for them. So it's really all to your own feeling, um, emotions and preparations, how thankful you can be. And uh, so I personally, I feel a lot of God's love in nature. And I had the great privilege in the early 1990s to be able to live on campus for about two years. I didn't live in the, the main building that you see here in the background, but I lived a little bit off, actually the other side, on this side. <laughs> It's uh, the so-called Harvest House, which is about 10 minutes walk from there to here. I worked in the main building and I made the decision that every day when I worked in the building, I walked. I walked away from the Harvest House to here and from here back to the Harvest House every day. I walked in the rain, I walked in the snow, I walked when people offered me to give a ride, I walked. And I want to invite you now to walk that path with me. Yeah. And so first you go out, it's a dirt road, it's not a paved road. You go out and you step on the stones and you see you can see nature around you you see the green in spring when it comes out the, the leaves coming the, the grass coming you see flowers blooming you see animals you see the hawks up a high flying you see the deer in the meadow and you see the gaggle or whatever it's called of turkeys, very scrawny birds actually, the wild turkeys they are. You see chipmunks and groundhogs and sometimes a fox. You walk and you see 
You see the sun on the leaves, how it's reflecting and, and shadow dabbling over the, over the road. You see the sun shining in through the ice that had formed on the branches, you know, and sparkling and sparkling. And then you can feel, you can feel the rain falling on your head or running down your glasses and your nose. You can feel the wind biting in your face. You can feel the, the warmth of the sun, of the sun on your skin. You can smell, you smell the sassafras leaves. Have you ever picked a leaf of sassafras and crunched it in your hands and you smell that it's a wonderful smell. You smell the flowers on the side of the road. You smell the earth. You smell things you may not have smelled before. And you walk down the road. And you hear, you hear the birds. You hear the skittle of something running over the grass and running through the leaves. You hear your feet crunching the ice on the ground and sometimes you can taste you can taste the wild strawberries on the side of the road and every day you walk and you see the nature is changing around you and is changing and is changing and it's constantly changing and constantly different but it is also always the same there's the same rock on the side. Sometimes it's covered in grass. Sometimes it's covered in ice. But it's the same rock there. It's the same tree there. Sometimes in bloom and sometimes it's dark in winter without any leaves. It's the same. And it occurred to me that the nature, all this changes from morning to the evening, from day to day, from Months to months, from season to season, it's always changing and always the same, and that is the same with God. And God, although he might or she might be always changing or seem to be changing, or the providence is changing, this is changing, this is changing, but it's always the same and it's always constant, wanting the best for us. Yeah. And so I just want to also put out a pitch for HJI. Now, while you, UTS was here, and now the institution, the institution is changing. We changed our names, we changed our location, but we are still the same. We are the same thing with the same vision that father had when he started the, the seminary, now HJI. It's always the same. I asked my husband, what he reminds most, remembers most of our time here in Barrytown. And then, and he mentioned one thing, which was also for me, the biggest, the biggest memory in our lives. And that was when right after his graduation, he got his mission assignment to go to Russia. I stayed here and before he left, was summer right after graduation which was in June in those days nice day beautiful day we decided in the evening to go down to the pond and so we walked down to the pond and it was getting dark and when we were down it was already dark and so we thought well it's better for us to turn around and go back home and when we turned around, we saw the hill. There's when you're on the pond, there's that hill which goes up to the main, the main level where everything else Barry Town is. And the hill was dark, but not really. It was sparkling. It was a flashing here, there was a flashing there, there was a light here and light there, there were lightning bugs. There were lightning bugs, and there was not just one or two. There were suddenly, there were hundreds of lightning bugs up on the hill, 
And we looked up the hill and there were those lightning bugs. And then we looked up into the sky, which was, it was not dark. There were stars up there and they were sparkling and flashing and lightning, just like the lightning bugs. And so you looked up the hill and into the sky and it was just one flashing and lightning and sparkling there. And you couldn't tell where the earth started and where the sky began. And it was like heaven and earth was one. And this is something I will always remember about Prairie Town. That was the place where I experienced that earth and heaven can be one. Wow. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much, dear Ute. Oh my goodness. What a nature person. Oh my goodness. How God is speaking to us yeah, through nature every day. Wow. Uh, we're, we have recorded this. We're going to transcribe that. Uh, Ute, and that will become an ode to the very town. Properties nature. So thank you to all of our speakers who have represented in an official capacity, uh, HCI, UTS, uh, up, up until this point in our program. Now we'd like to hear from two special speakers who were joining us uh, on Zoom uh, from the comfort of their offices or their homes to share their thoughts. The first person I'd like to invite up is Dr. Franco Pambolaro, who is the chair of the uh, HJI Board of Trustees. Dr. Famalaro. Thank you, Dean Boyd, and thank you, Dr. Walsh, Dr. Ward, Dr. Mickler, all the UTS faculty, staff, administration. Wow, I was with Ute Delaney and Irmgard Baines in Bonn, West Germany in 1977. And we uh, were missionizing there. So I have always known Uze to be quiet and focused. And I was amazed by what she shared just now. First of all, happy Thanksgiving to all my American brothers and sisters. And uh, this is the greatest uh, holiday on the American calendar. And I know that so many of you uphold this tradition with great passion and great dedication. And I think it's one of the greatest holidays and what more appropriate day to hold this Thanksgiving service for Barrytown. You know, I first heard about Barrytown in 1975 when I joined here in Canada. And one of our members who happens to be Bob Smart's wife and Ranisty, she told me, I'm going to Barrytown. I'm going to Barrytown for a workshop. I don't know if it was 40 days or 120 days. And said, what's Barrytown? What's Barrytown? <laughs> right? You know, <clears throat> my first uh, introduction to UTS was when I was in the United Kingdom in 1978 when Father started the uh, home church providence there. And suddenly we had Andy Wilson show up on our doorstep who took over as a center leader. And the first thing he did is I'm gonna to do to you what father did to me. And he sent us out to our home church areas and said, don't come back until you tell us that you have a place to stay and a place to witness in. You know, there's so many memories connected to UTS. Um, the great professors from the different traditions Henry Thompson, Richard Arthur, Richard Cabello, and many, many more. I was personally asked by father in 91 to go to Barrytown, to go to UTS. And uh, maybe I'll share one thing about father's visits. He came several times when I was there, always all of a sudden. Um, father's coming, and we just so happened to go to the founder's uh, dining room or to the lecture hall two, which became lecture hall one. I can't remember what it was called more recently. And suddenly father would speak for eight hours. But one in particular was just after I graduated in 94. Father came up 
And that day, he spent the entire time going through each point of the new family pledge, one point at a time with us, engaging us and discussing with us and asking, our, asking for our input on the family pledge. It was quite a, a remarkable experience to be with him in that. What memories. Playing soccer. I was there when the first batch of the children of the 36 couples joined uh, UTS, and we played soccer. Some of them were experts at tennis. I wasn't very good. And I also discovered golf at UTS. Wow, this was the greatest discovery. And to find out that some of my Korean elders were such experts in golf, I said, where will they find the time to play golf? Anyways, it's a great thing. The oratory contest, the DP contests, the debates. And we're so grateful that we had such a wonderful experience to be there uh, among people with whom we became great friends. You can pick up the phone and call your old UTS alum and you don't need any introductions or formalities. We became so close because we spent all that time together, the cold winters at UTS. And I have to say that all together, uh, we're in a new era. We had a very difficult, challenging uh, time to make the decision to sell Barrytown uh, believe me, it wasn't easy, but everybody came together and understood that this was the way that we have to go. And now we're in a new era with a new name, H.J. International Graduate School for Peace and Public Leadership. And our goal is to educate and raise people that can truly be the leaders. I'm so grateful that there are young people here, younger than us, who can carry the torch into the future. And I pray for the success of HJI and that each one of you will benefit and your children will benefit and that all of us can truly fulfill the dream of our true parents. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Famolaro. Thank you so much for your words. And then our second and final testimony in today's program will be offered by our dear elder sister, Mrs. Marie Ong, who with her husband served many, many years in service to uh, then UT UTS here at the Barrytown campus and beyond. So let's welcome Mrs. Marie Ong. Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for having this program. It brings back a ton of memories, of course. And um, <clears throat> I could just say briefly that uh, we arrived there in 1975 in the end of December. It was a uh, cold, snowy, uh, time nobody but no one was at the seminary at that time they were all in new york city uh, celebrating god's day or preparing to and um <clears throat> came with three children um our, uh, david Joni, and uh dohi who was one year old and uh we we went back to we knew we had a house so we went back to look at the house and you know and it was dark and we went one of my children had to go to the bathroom, so we thought there's a bathroom inside. We went in, and it was nothing. It was all gutted. We did see a toilet up there through the ceiling, which was open. But uh, anyway, that was our beginning. <clears throat> and I must say that our our children, later, Jenny was born there in 1979, right at the time of the matching. So luckily, she came one day early, so Edwin could be there with me. Um, but uh, that our children really uh, consider 
Barrytown, their hometown. They grew up there. And um, dur <laughs> during my time there, uh, probably the most um, thing that I treasure the most is, is true parents coming so often. It, that particular spring, they came so often making the nets and doing the fishing and inter introducing that. And um, and we and I learned very quickly that we, I had to be ready in a moment's notice to serve true parents, to serve father any time of the day or whenever. And um, that was quite an experience. I, I treasure that because I, the most, I guess I could say the, uh, the, I'm really, uh, well, we were there and we, we, we did move into Sunnyside um, before the graduation and um, I think it was that spring that father was choosing people to go on to graduate school to uh, continue their education for their PhDs. And I was over in mother's kitchen with Mrs. Sudo and Mrs. Fruta. Um, and I got the message that father was in our house. And um, I, I thought, oh, my goodness, because, you know, we were still in the process of moving in and so on. And anyway, um, I I went out there and uh, he had called all the, I think it was the seniors to go out there, maybe a few people anyway, to, and that's where he chose people to go on to graduate school, I believe, on for their PhDs. But um, I had just bought a new chair and then there was one in the corner that was old and kind of rickety. But he sat in the old and rickety chair for some reason, True Father did. He just didn't really care. He just wanted to be there with the students. And there were many informal situations with True Father and even True Mother. Um, and many times the True Children came. And, uh, uh, you know, I got to know them pretty well um, while they were coming up there and spend time uh, on the horses or whatever. <clears throat> I'm uh it's also while we were at Barrytown that as the children were growing we <clears throat> began Sunday school I was responsible for that and uh or, along with the other women the mothers there and uh we also inaugurated Camp Sunrise in about I think it was 1980 just a small group with mostly our children of, and then it continued to grow and grow uh, that was with the help of Nora Spurgeon and uh, some other mothers that were there. And eventually Betsy Jones and Farley Jones came and helped and uh, Lynn Rapkins. And then there was a child care program that um, I worked with Rako Mickler to, uh, we had quite a few children that would, and we had th in three different locations at one point, um, in the Messina house, in the uh, cottage, and in in another location. So I was pretty busy. Um, at the same time, Edwin was very busy at the seminary. He, he would go over, he spent most of his time there. But we had a bike, so when he had to get over there quickly, he'd ride the bike over and, and lean it up against the tree uh, behind the kitchen. And um, uh, while we were there, uh, Edwin always mentioned that there were 777 uh, graduates that graduated while we were at the, uh, our term there. Um, and it's really, uh, it's amazing that still, I remember so, uh, so many of the graduates, um, and I'm concerned, and I mean, not concerned so much, but interested to see how their lives have led them. Um, and, uh, I just, I just am so grateful for the opportunity to be at Barrytown for those 17 years we were there. Uh, the time with True Father, the time with Dr. Kim and Mrs. Kim, especially, she taught me so much. Um, it was just a really rich time to be there, um, serving and, uh, enjoying the beautiful uh, location where we were. So thank you very much for listening. And thank you again for having this program. It's remembering and thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ong. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. And thank you to everybody who was able to join us today. 
those of you, uh, those a small group here on the very town property this morning, those of you who are joining us from afar. Uh, I think ever the reflections all bring together different aspects of the meaning of the providence and the era of Berrytown. And I hope also, as Dr. Walsh was explaining, this helps us to look forward to the future of HJI, which is a brilliant future centered upon our true mother's guidance and thanks to our heavenly parent. So to close, uh, Mrs. Ong, may I ask you to say the closing prayer for us, please? Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Our precious heavenly parent and the honoring our true parents. We come to, we are just so grateful, Father, for this time that we can come together and remember and be grateful, so grateful that for our true father for and our true mother for the course that they've gone. And it, which included setting up educational institutions like UTS and HJI. Father, we all benefited so much from this time, any time that we spent there or are spending there now, in growing in your love and in, in your truth, and really um, feeling your, your presence, Father, feeling your heart so clearly. We're grateful, Father, for all that you've given to us throughout the years, all the, the um, good times and those challenging times that helped us to grow. And we look forward now as we continue on the path, continue growing and learning and serving. Um, I pray, Father, for those who are leading this institution now, for President Walsh and all those, Father, who are working with him. We're grateful, Father, for each person who's devoted themselves to educating and to learning and to going out in the world and sharing your love and your truth as best they could. We really pray for each one, Father, and we want to just say thank you so much. We offer this prayer in the name of all of our names here and in my name, Edwin and Marie Young of a Blessed Central Family. Adieu. Adieu. Thank you, Mrs. Ong. Uh, Angelica, could you put us on uh, gallery mode? And we'll take a couple to say goodbye to wave to everyone, and then we'll sign off. Wonderful, uh, wonderful service. Excellent. Okay, thank uh, you so much. Thank you. A great thank way you. to say wonderful. goodbye to Mary Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.